Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC2 at QuickSurf Internet Studios. The Geekinator is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks since I've put an episode out. I've been out of town traveling and sick. You can still probably hear it. I'm a little, uh, have a little bit of congestion. I caught a very, really severe cold. Um, I had to fly to uh, Phoenix to deal with some uh, stuff with uh, some uh, uh, things that I, uh, some business I had going on there and I didn't even uh, make it the first day. I was already starting to get all clogged up. I think I ran across a, a bug either at uh, Oakland International Airport or, or at uh, Sky Harbor Airport or just there on the plane on the way there. By uh, Friday night, I flew out Friday night and by late that Friday night, I was already feeling uh, pretty uh, pretty terrible. And uh, by by the next day, it was over. And, you know, Saturday basically was miserable, Sunday miserable, Monday miserable, flew back Tuesday, miserable, missed work this whole week, um, spent Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday basically uh, just uh, sleeping and being miserable. So I'm, I'm much better right now, but like I said, I'm going to try to keep the show short because you can probably still hear I'm, I'm still fairly congested. So uh, this weekend will be more of uh, <laughs> sleeping and, you know, drinking liquids. Hopefully uh, by Monday I will be actually well enough to go back to work. So anyway, uh, today is March 14th. Uh, for those of us who are in the tech community, it is National Pi Day 3.14 is, uh, or 314 uh, is National Pi Day here in the U.S., uh, I, I have a really cool link here uh, from the, uh, the Guardian's uh, Liberty Voice over at guardianlv.com. National Pie Day celebrations in the United States. Friday, March 14th was National Pie Day, and it was celebrated all around the United States and the world. How did you celebrate it? I didn't. I was sick. Uh, you know, I'm basically just now feeling well enough to do anything, and it's really late Friday. Um Festivities ranged from eating pie to pizzerias offering pizza pie for $3.14 to people watching pie-related movies such as American Pie and Life of Pie. Fittingly, March 14th was also the birthday of physicist Albert Einstein. So, uh, for those of us who are here in the U.S., the article points out that National Pie Day is an actual national holiday in the United States. The day was made a national holiday in, in 2009 by Congress, a day when the nation's lawmakers actually did something besides bickering and disagreeing with each other. For those of you who follow the news uh, of uh, what's going on, if you're not in the U.S., if you follow the new news of what's going on in the U.S., uh, since... Uh, President Obama has taken office, um, you know, it has been basically nothing happening. It has been miserable. Congress has been just the least productive I've ever seen Congress be ever uh, in my relatively short existence. It has not been pretty. So uh, anyway, pretty interesting. Um, I thought I'd point the article out for those of you who uh, want to take a look at it. On kind of a related note, uh, over at the Washington Post in their technology section, um, there's a story here, U.S. to relinquish, re relinquish remaining control over the Internet. This comes on the heels of a lot of the revelations on what's been going on with the NSA. Uh, you know, U.S. officials announced plans Friday to relinquish federal government control over the administration of the Internet, a move that pleased international uh, critics, but alarm some business leaders and others who rely of, on the smooth functioning of the web. I myself am a little concerned. Part of the reason why the internet has, has worked so smoothly for as long as it has is because a lot of the administration of it has been under uh, one, uh, effectively one governing body, if you will, and or one controlling body. And, um, you know, as soon as you start to 
split things up like that. We've I've seen this happen at companies. You know, you see this happen at company levels where something that's very important gets split up uh, among a couple of different departments when before it was under one department, and you know, then th it just doesn't run as you know that particular function just doesn't run as smoothly after that because there's just you know disconnects and inner department you know, bickering for lack of a better way of saying it, we can very well see this happening to the internet at, you know, at, on a worldwide scale. Uh, so I, I, I myself, it, it, it's kind of a two edged sword. I, I'm glad, but at the same time, I'm a little concerned because I've seen stuff, you know, having distributed control, you know, going from one centralized control to distributed control, handing that over. I've seen that not go very well at all. I've also seen it go fairly well. But, uh, you know, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully all the parties involved realize that this is important and, and treat it as such. So the worst thing that we can see is what Congress has been doing, uh, you know, happening to, you know, control the Internet. That would just suck. Um, from VentureBeat.com, over in their games beat, Skype's Xbox, Xbox One app gets better chat sync contact management and Captain America Emoticons. I, I don't know. Captain America's coming out soon. I'm, I'm kind of jazzed to see the movie. Um, Xbox One, I don't have one. I've never owned an Xbox. Weirdly enough, I'm not a console gamer, as strange as that sounds. I, I am heavy, you know, tech, heavy geek, totally into, you know, most things tech and geek, but you know, games-wise, I've always been kind of a PC gamer. I've never gotten into the console game arena. Um, you know, it just, it, you know, not something that I would, that I do much of. And games in general are just, you know, not something I that I really have all that much free time to do at any way. You know, I work full-time. I do, in fact, have a personal life outside of this show that is quite busy, even though I don't really talk about it much here. Um, so, you know, I've never really been a, a, a console gamer, but uh, I thought this was interesting for those of you who are. Uh, the story is, if you've ever missed an important Skype chat while playing on your Xbox One gaming console, today's update will be good news. In its first big update for the Skype app since the Xbox One launched, with its strategy to do more than just play games and become an entertainment center for your living room, Microsoft has revamped its chat synchronization so you'll no longer miss any messages. The new app also adds notifications for new chat messages. Don't ask why, there wasn't much there at launch, and keeps a history of up to 1,000 chat messages. That's a lot of chat. Uh, so uh, for those of you who are Xbox One users, this is, uh, this is potentially good news. Definitely check it out. From Forbes.com, I thought that I would uh, point this out uh, simply because I thought it was really cool. Um, the, the title of the story is Affordable Asus Chromebox Cloud PC Fires a Shot Across Microsoft's Bow. I'm all into, you know, small, light, cheap, and powerful. Recently, I spent some quality time testing and tearing down, this is the story, uh, the new Asus Chromebox Small Form Factor Chrome OS PC. This little 5x5 five five inch brick runs Google's latest Chrome operating system. The model I tested was based on an Intel Core i3 dual core processor, 4 gigs of 1600 megahertz RAM, and a 16 gigabyte SSD. Uh, on board, 802.11n Wi Fi, Bluetooth 4.0, four USB 3 ports, and gigabit Ethernet. By all measures, with the exception of the storage capacity, 16 gig SSD. Uh, this is a pretty respectable entry-level PC. You know, is, you can do a lot with this computer. Um, with its AC adapter and wireless keyboard and mouse bundle, Asus has set its MSRP at a very affordable $369. That is incredible. $369, you basically have a computer. That's awesome. Uh, so you get a complete PC, sans the display, so you do have to buy a display. Uh, along with the Google Apps ecosystem, 100 gigs of Google Drive storage for two years, and for well under $400 in street, for well under $400 in street prices could drift lower. So basically, you know, 
minus the monitor, which you, you know a lot of people, myself included, have more than one monitor. I've got a monitor here on my desktop. My laptop obviously has a built-in monitor. I've got more than one laptop. Uh, I have a monitor hooked up back behind here. You can't see it because I don't have the door open, but my uh, my home FreeBSD server has a dedicated monitor um, that I just bought and used uh, off of eBay just so that I'd have a monitor that I wouldn't have to keep, you know, doing the whole cabling thing if I needed to actually, you know, couldn't SSH into it, needed a local console. Anyway, you know, monitors people generally tend to have, you know, they're a relatively expensive investment item. You buy a good monitor and you use it for a long time. My current desktop monitor is a 24-incher. I have had it for several years now. When I bought it, 24-inch monitors were huge. You know, it's 1920 by 1200 uh, resolution. Back in the day, that was a ginormous monitor. Nowadays, not so much, but, you know, it's just uh, one of those things. At some point, I will not actually be able to continue using it because I it doesn't have DisplayPort or Thunderbolt or any of that other stuff. So at some point, I will have to upgrade it. Uh, and when I do, I'll buy an awesome what's considered an awesome monitor, probably a 4K monitor, and uh, keep it for several years. So... Um, you know, monitor, I'm not worried about that. You know, like I said, a lot of people tend to have monitors. The Asus Chromebox for $369, you know, it's a great deal. Definitely check it out if you're looking for a second PC or maybe you're an entry level PC for a member of your household. From uh, rcpmag.com, Microsoft nixes the Nook plans for new consumer reader app. Uh, Microsoft and bookseller Barnes & Noble are refocusing their collaboration on a new reader app, according to a Barnes & Noble 8K Securities and Exchange Commission filing. The two companies are essentially modifying the terms of an agreement reached in October 2012 concerning a partnership on Barnes & Noble's Nook electronic reader devices. The 8K filing states that Barnes & Noble can back away from collaborating on a Windows Phone app. Also, instead of distributing on a Windows Nuke app, Barnes & Noble can collaborate with Microsoft on something described as the Microsoft Consumer Reader. So, interesting. Uh, I thought I would include it here because there are a fair number of Barnes & Noble Nuke users out there. From fastcompany.com, Samsung's ultrasonic smartphone case helps the visually impaired sense their surroundings. This is cool. Come on. Accessibility, you know, I'm, I'm all for accessibility. I, I have, uh, I don't want to get too much into the details, but I, I do have members uh, in my household that, that, uh, n that do use and need accessibility options. And, you know, so I'm, 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 I'm all about this kind of thing. Uh, Samsung has developed a smartphone case that helps the visually impaired by enhancing their awareness of their surroundings. The ultrasonic cover for its Galaxy Core Advanced smartphone helps users sense the presence of people and objects up to two meters away. How awesome is that? Uh, the cover includes a number of physical buttons to aid disabled users. The ultrasonic cover emits a high frequency sound, listening for the sound wave that bounces back. When it detects a nearby object, the phone lets the smartphone owner know by sending a vibration alert or a text-to-speech notification. In some sense, it's almost like the case can see for its owner. This is cool. Uh, definitely check this out, especially if you uh, need that sort of accessibility. Uh, I imagine this will probably be for visually impaired uh, individuals, but still, nonetheless, pretty awesome. Uh, that will do it for this edition of The Geekinator. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then.